Hey guys, we are back with some more San Jose Sharks franchise mode, and we are at the draft here. As we got kicked out in the first round, or the second round rather, <laughs> in the last episode, so we're going to get started with this draft, although I do want to make a trade in the draft here. I have a list of five trading partners here that we got to go through, so let's uh, offer trade right now. See if we can make this trade right now. I'm hoping that we can anyway. So, we're going to be trading away, I'm, I want to try to trade away Mikel Bakker because, take a look at Bakker, his offensive awareness really isn't the greatest for a second liner, and only 38 points on the second line, not really the greatest, minus 12, and then in the playoffs he did almost nothing. Ah, good old congestion season, okay. <laughs> anyway, let's add Bakker to the table here, and first... We're going to take a look at the Buffalo Sabres, and I'm interested in acquiring Kylo Pozo, 30 years old, $6 million per year, six years. Not particularly attractive, but he has that 89 offensive awareness, which we need, we really needed for that playoff run. And I still truly believe that this team is able to make uh, another run for the Stanley Cup next year. So that's why I'm considering trading for Kylo Pozo now if we traded for him. Uh, that'd be a, quite a bit of value, so you would have to add something else in there. I uh, don't want to add any prospects. Uh, the most I would be able to give up here is another draft pick, so maybe a third. Uh, I don't know. That's going to be a long shot, but I'm not going to try that trade now. We're going to first go to the next team, which is the LA Kings. Now uh, this might be <laughs> a little bit of a little bit of a harder trade to make than the one for Kyle Pozo. I was looking at Tyler Toffoli, only 83 overall, but he's still got that 88 offensive awareness. He's younger, a bit better of a contract, and uh, let's see if we can we can uh, pick him up. He that actually might go through, as it is. Uh, it's definitely less trade value than. It's definitely less trade value than Okpozo, so I don't know that, hmm, because here's the thing, Toffoli got a much better offensive awareness than Bakker, scored more points last year as well, and it looks like LA did not make the playoffs, so uh, that's an option right there. Then our next team here is the New York Islanders. I was looking at Jordan Eberle. Now, here's the thing. Eb they want to give up Eberle. So, we might be able to pick him up for cheaper than if we were to get Toffoli or Akpozo. So, let's see. If we added our third in here. Again, I'm all right with giving up draft picks. That might go through as well. So, got a few options here. Next is Pittsburgh. And we are going to take a look at Connor Sheary. Now, uh, they don't want to give up Sheary. But he's got less trade value than all the other guys we've looked at so far. And he's got an 87 offensive awareness. So, he's not... Uh, and I mean... He's not really that bad. And I mean, 9 points in the past playoffs. But that's probably playing with Crosby or Malkin. So, uh, let's see. I'm That might go through as is, but... It's not my ideal trade. Now, here would be the ideal trade for me. Tampa. <laughs> they apparently want... They want Bakker. Now, are they willing to give up what I want to get? Uh, where is... Right, well, there's Point and there's Palat. Yes, yeah, so this is a bit of a long shot trade here. But I want Point and Palat out of these guys. Yeah, that's that's a lot of value. <laughs> yeah, we would have to give up, like, Couture and Meyer probably for that. And uh, the most we have right now is a third. Yeah, no, there's no way that's going through. Absolutely no way that's going through. I can dream, but, yeah, no. I don't think the Tampa trade's happening. So I'd balk her back in there. I'll add a third back in there. Because, I mean, the draft's pretty deep this year anyway. And we'll go back to Buffalo here. Now, Buffalo doesn't want Bakker, and they don't want to give up Akpozo, I don't think I saw. Let's see. Forwards. Yeah, no, they don't want to give up 
Akpozo. And LA, they're over the cap. Actually, about how much? Like 3 mil. But if we add to Foley, and they don't want to give up to Foley, but, but that's a lot less trade value than Akpozo. So it's really a matter of <laughs> which player do I want here? Because I could get really any of these players besides Point and Palat. So, hmm. And I, I probably wouldn't be able to get Palat in there even without Point. So, because he, he's listed as a first liner. Because so, that's just a little bit too, too much trade value. But I'm liking the way Toffoli's looking there. Uh, let's see. I really, I, I don't know because the Islanders don't want uh, Bakker, but they want to get rid of Eberle here. He's got an 89 offensive awareness, uh, 64 points, but playing next to Tavares and uh, pff, not the greatest playoff production, but that was in real life. I guess the Islanders didn't uh, make the playoffs this year either. So uh, as we take a look back at Pittsburgh for Connor Sherry, Actually, you know what? That, that'd be like a last resort kind of trade for Shiri. Because I, like, uh, I like the trades with the Kings, the Sabres, and the Islanders better. Just because uh, these players are ob obviously a little bit better than Connor Shiri. So, uh, I mean, they're all second liners. It's just a matter of... So, Opozo has the most trade value out of all of those guys. If I were to get Okpozo, that's that's a big contract though. I might uh, might not want to get that because that takes them to these 36. But if we take a look at LA, Toffoli, 4.6 for I believe two years, three years. So that's a better contract on Toffoli, and he's almost pretty. He's pretty much just as good offensively as Okpozo, but he's not as good physically, obviously. So uh, that's an option right there. And then the Islanders with Eberly. Now he's got a $6 million contract, but it's only two years. Uh, and he's pretty much just as good as those other guys as well offensively. So I guess if I had to choose, I think I would take Toffoli. But man, Eberly with that shooting category. I mean, he's more of an assist guy, I guess. Uh, but Toffoli's the youngest as well. And he has the best contract. I mean, we're not necessarily looking for youth right now. We're looking for what will win us the Stanley Cup. So, uh, I, I, what did, uh, did LA want Bodker? Yeah, LA wants Bodker. That's the thing. And Bodker has more value than the third round pick so I might try to trade for Toffoli here that might go through actually I don't think it would go through with just Barker and Toffoli no that won't go through but maybe with the pick in there maybe we could get the a fourth and a fifth instead of a third maybe just a, even a fourth would that work rejected okay not sufficient at all so maybe a fourth and a fifth if we could get it for this, then that'd be a pretty good, solid trade, I'd say. Proposed trade? No. Okay. So maybe instead we put the third in there? But they don't want the third, so... But with that, still be extra value. Let's see. Accept it. Okay, so we got Tyler Toffoli now. Now watch. That's going to that's gonna come back to bite us. <laughs> and and Mikel Bakker's going to score on us in the in a Game 7 of, uh, of a Western Conference Final or something, so... Uh, but yeah, there you go. We now have a better second line. So that is out of the way. And uh, let's get the draft over with. Uh, unless there's another trade I want to make. Just so we can improve our bottom six. Because we are very defense heavy on the bottom six. And uh, we do need some scoring help <laughs> on, uh, the, on the third and fourth line. <sighs> you know what? No, I'm going to save it for later. I, I'm just... I want to get into... The rest of the offseason here, and we don't really have um, much here in this draft. Jordan Stahl for a first, no thanks. Uh, not really. I mean, I, I would normally see, like, I would normally like all these trades, especially for 
contender, but I don't want to trade too many picks away. You know what I mean? Like we already, we don't have any round one through three picks in this year. So I don't want to handicap ourselves again next year if we don't have to, right? So I, I'd rather take a look at free agency first. So let's see who is available here. Doesn't look like too much, but uh, you know, you, you can, you might, you might be able to get lucky here. Okay, so a high top four that could be like a, I guess a low elite or maybe like a <laughs> low bottom seven or or uh, top seven. Who knows? So he's supposed to go in the fourth round. There's no league interest, so I don't know if I want to take that. Uh, maybe we'll just take this exact top six. He's got high league interest. Offensive defenseman, Colin Young. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. That's that's a pretty good player right there. <laughs> I'm not sure if I passed anyone up there who I should have looked at first before taking him, but I'm satisfied with that pick. That's pretty good for a fourth rounder, I would say. Nice offensive defenseman right there. He's got the low potential, but still uh, got a slight chance of making uh, the NHL, I suppose. All right, so let's see. So, so if I get like a goaltender here, it might pay off on the trade value side of things. Wes Savage, <laughs> that's a great name. You know what? I'm taking that. Let's see. Make pick. Uh, yeah, medium fringe starter. That's not bad. That might get it, get some uh, trade value out of that. So not a bad pick right there. Okay, let's see. Uh, maybe time scouted. Go by that. Come on, game. There we go. All right, so a lot of AHL potentials right there. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, just a lot of AHL potentials right there. So we're no use sorting that way. Let's go back to potential. So there's a high bottom six right there. High league interest. M last name is Malm. James Malm. Uh, I mean, I'm not really looking... I'm not really particular interested in playmakers on the bottom six but that might be like a top nine for like a low top nine so you know what? i'll take a chance on him uh pff, angel top six okay never mind then <laughs> it'll be a career ahl i suppose okay so yeah really not too much i mean for for the quality of the picks that we had it wasn't that bad of a draft because we got a lot of quite a a few NHL potentials there, but uh, nothing too exciting. As uh, we finish up here, I'll just take this Corey guy. Hope for the best. NHL top six. <laughs> yeah, okay. So that is it for the drafts. Uh, only four players, uh, and only two of those players are any good. So whatever, though. The draft wasn't really the main concern this year for the San Jose Sharks. We're going to go to this, <laughs> the resign phase. That's going to be, uh, that'll be fun. So uh, let's take a look here. So Joe Thornton doesn't want to resign. Neither does Yager. So that's going to be a problem right there. Han uh, Hansen wants to resign. Machinter wants to resign. But uh, he's just taking up space down there in the AHL. He doesn't need to be playing. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Lurg. Yeah, he's just taking up space. He can be released. Let's see, Bolig, minor checking forward. Yeah, he's pretty good down there. Let's see, oh, Reagan, other forward, but he's got a high top six potential. So I might sign that. Uh, Hurdle. Okay, good. So Hurdle wants to re-sign. So <sighs> it might be uh, a bit difficult re-signing Yager and Thornton here. So I'm going to do the best I can to negotiate with them, but it might be difficult to get them back. Same thing with Ward and Van Riemsdyk and all those guys are saying they don't want to resign. I don't know how that works. Let me let me know how that works. I've I've tried negotiating with those players in resign stages of my own personal GM modes, but I can't figure out like the like you just release those guys to free agency and then try to sign them there. Because will, will you be able to get them cheaper there since they may just want to test the free agent market, you know? I don't know. You guys got to let me know on that. UFA. Doesn't look like any of these guys are really too big. Well, oh, Gregor, Gregor. Yep, got to sign him. And then Shoemaker, I mean, yeah, I guess we'll get him. 
not really expecting too much out of him, but uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, everyone else here doesn't want to resign, so I, I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, Yager wants four mil for two years. Goodness, <laughs> I mean, he he wants to, the man wants to play till he's fifty, apparently. So uh, let's see. Yeah, let's just get those guys out of the way first. Let's see. Dell doesn't want to resign. I mean, okay. So let's let's get the guys who do want to resign out of the way, and then we'll take a look here. So Hansen rejected. Demello accepted, Tierney accepted, Hurdle rejected. So, is that uh, is that fifteen percent rule all of a sudden like gone now from <laughs> NHL eighteen? I seem to have a harder time uh, re-signing people here. Accepted, 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 accepted. Okay, so not too many NHLers signed right there. I think it was only one or two of them. I don't even think uh, Hurdle resigned. So uh, we might <laughs> end up. Uh, Losing a couple people here. I mean, uh, we have 15 mil in cap space. Who wanted to resign again? Hurdle, Hansen. That's it. So uh, I'll get those guys first and then see how much we have. I mean, Hurdle alone is going to be like 5 mil. And then Hansen. Okay, so uh, I definitely want Hurdle. If I can give him for f five years, maybe 4.75, that'd be good. Hanson, if I could get you at like 2.6 or uh, two years and then 2.85, that'd be good. And again, we'll back out. We'll deal with those guys who don't want to sign later. Come on now, game. Advanced day. Projected again and accepted from Hurdle, so that's good. He's the guy who I was really concerned about there, so... Uh, contracts, oh, man, <laughs> already on the 27th, and we still have yet to sign Yager and Thornton because they don't want to resign here. <sighs> One year for five, <sighs> man, that's going to be tough, that's going to be tough. <sighs> I guess th they're important parts of the team though, so I guess, I <sighs> do I have to overextend for these guys, like four point, maybe give Yager 4.3? And then for Thornton, give him like 6.3. Is that how this works? Like with the, the, the yeses and the noes? Like, I don't understand some of this. Uh, like, I, I feel like some of the offseason stuff is different from, from last year. What if I gave him three mil for two years? Well, like, does the amount of years have more of an effect now than it did in previous years? Because, like, I... I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like the resign stage is a lot different than it was last year. Advanced day. Let's see what happens. Rejected. Jesus. Yeah, he he wants to test the free agent markets. <sighs> would would we be able to? Here's here's my question. Would we be able to sign him for cheaper if we were to just let him go to free agency? That's the thing, because we offered him. We we just offered him more than he was asking for in the resign stage, and he's still rejecting. So uh, let me know what to do there. Hansen accepted. Yaga rejected. Like, see what I mean? Uh, it's it, it feels a lot harder to resign players in the off season this year, and I'm not sure if I like that or if I don't like it. I mean, I, I guess it adds a little bit of realism, but it's it's frustrating to. <laughs> deal with that because th now you have all these players leaving your team and you thought you were a contending team but now you got your first line center and your second line right winger walking <laughs> to free agency apparently and uh i mean trevor van reemsdijk am i gonna be able to get any of these guys back like even if i sign them to a one way one year deal get them at like 3.5 for trevor van reemsdijk i mean that seems like a lot for him though that's the thing and uh, then Joe Ward, maybe get one year, 3.4. Like, it, it seems like there's no, I don't know. Like, what's the reason why players, uh, is there is there any reason why players in this game don't particularly want to re-sign with you? Is it because the team's doing bad? Because we didn't do too bad. We got to the second round, right? So most players, I would imagine, would want to stay on a team like that who's still a contender, you know? 
I don't know. Uh, I mean, even like Trevor Van Riemsdyk's rejecting, so I, just, I don't know what to do. Uh, you know what? I, you know what? I think I'm just gonna let those guys walk to free agency, and then I'm gonna let you guys chime in in the comments about what to do because I, I, that's one of the few parts of this game that I still don't under quite understand about g this uh, about NHL 18 GM mode is the re-sign stage and how, uh, and how much. Is it worth really re-signing players or trying to re-sign players that don't want to re-sign, you know? So, again, for now, I'm just going to let these guys walk. Uh, I really hate to do that, but they just they don't want to sign. So, I don't, there's nothing I can do <sighs> besides overextend, and I don't want, really want to overextend. So, uh, you guys let me know in the comments what we should do about that because I really... I, 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 uh, I'm still used to the NHL 17 ways of uh, <laughs> of re-signing players. So let me know on that. And I believe that is it for contracts. Yeah, it looks like it's it. Uh, let's see. UFA expiring. Uh, that's next year. RFA, nothing. Okay, so it appears we're all good unless there's a UFA goalie down there in the minors. No, we're all good. Okay, so... I think I'm going to step it to free agency. We'll check out free agency and then we're going to end it there. Uh, will they sign for cheaper in free agency than they would in the contract state? Because obviously we weren't going to be able to re-sign them without overextending, right? Because, I mean, you saw I offered everyone who didn't want to re-sign like an extra half a mil and they still didn't want to re-sign. So I don't know how much of that is in my control. But I wouldn't imagine it's completely uh, in my control there. So, uh, as you can see, Cam Atkinson is in free agency. Joe Thornton, obviously. Uh, Yarmir Yager. So, I mean, what do we want to do here in free agency? I mean, we got some options. We could resign Thornton. We'll try to resign Thornton. We'll try to resign Yager. But, like, we could probably replace someone like Trevor Van Riemsdyk and Joel Ward, right? So let me know on that. Let me know what we should do. I'll just go through the, all the free agents really quick. The UFAs anyway. So Atkinson, Thornton, Neil, Chara, Nash. I'm guessing that's Rick Nash. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you never know between uh, Rick and Riley Nash. And then uh, Jack Johnson, Patrick Maroon, Grabner, uh, DeHaan, Garrison, Seidenberg, Dupre, Verbata, Holden, Cogliano, Spiza. Georges, Bozak, uh, all these options right here. So let me know on that. And then goaltenders, let's see. Uh, Craig Anderson, Grubauer, Halak, Ward. Uh, that's right. We do we need a, we still do need a backup goaltender. So maybe we think about uh, maybe we think about Halak or Ward or someone like that, some experienced veteran, just in case. And uh, let's check potentials actually, just to see if there's anyone out there. Uh, does not appear like it. And as we check age, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, nothing really too special going on there. So uh, I'm going to end it here. Again, I need your guys' feedback for this one. I I'm, I, I just want to know if, I, I just want to know what is the best way to go about the, the re-sign stage from now on in the situation that a player doesn't want to re-sign, you know? Like, is there a way to, pre and is there a way to prevent them not wanting to re-sign or is it just random? <laughs> so let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one.